This is the NBA Wire with Mateo Chang, episode 3. I am a meat popsicle. Inspirational NBA talk with successful alumni to motivate you during your application run. We go behind the scenes of every story, talk business, and show you why it's worthwhile to never give up on your NBA dream. And now, here's your host with the most, Matteo Chang. What's up, citizens of The Wire? Welcome back to yet another episode of this motivational podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, today, I'm very excited and very, very, very honored to have with us our guest, Andre Duarte Oliveira. He, is, uh, he holds a, BA, a bachelor's in engineering. Uh, also, he's an MBA alumni from Kellogg, class of 2002. Now, Andre, he has built his entire career in the financial market, and today he's the head of risk management in a top private bank here in Brazil. Andre, welcome to the NBA Wire. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, I've given our listeners a little introduction about you, uh, just, you know, very, very uh, general overview. Uh, could you add something, maybe a personal touch to, to, to this introduction so that our listeners could get to know you? Oh, hi, Matthew. Hi, all the listeners. Um, I'm very glad to be here, and I hope I can help, right? Uh, you know, about my life, um, besides what you just said, yeah, there are so many things. But um, I'm actually a, very, a person very interested in wines. I was just telling you that I love, you know, knowing a little bit about the wines and knowing a, bit, a little bit about the countries that produce them. Uh, it's not very, no, not any professional thing. It's just, no. I think that I like to do. And um, also very much into tennis in the last two years, uh, actually in the last five years. And I'm training and that helps with my health too. Nice. So it's uh, yeah. so many things that I like to do besides working, but work's uh, actually the primal stuff. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. So, so you, you, enjoy your wine, you, you enjoy wine and then you burn off the alcohol from the wine by playing tennis. Is that kind of the... It's kind of a cycle, right? Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice, good. It's a, it's a healthy way to to release the the daily stress that we that we uh, encounter on a daily basis, right? right? Yeah, nice, very nice. Um, now, is there something you're working on today that you're really excited about? I mean, is there something you know, like a project or personal project that you're like, you know, you can't wait to get up in the morning to do? So, Matthew, um, I am, uh, have to tell you that uh, I'm usually kind of excited with things I'm working with, but um, so uh, this uh, and this challenge of you know heading a uh, uh, risk management area in a bank here, big bank here in Brazil, is has been a, a nice opportunity for me to develop some of my skills. You now you're always developing. I believe in that. Uh, you're not. You're ten, ten years from my MBA graduation, but you're always learning something new, and I'm. You know, uh, actually very much learning right now. And uh, a lot of pe interesting people that are working with me in the team. So I, I love teamwork. So it, it's very excited. But I also have a personal project. I have, um, now I'm an angel investor in an internet-based company right now. And I help to put out the things, out, although I'm not in the management. I'm only an investor. You know, I kind of uh, give, them, give them some you know, some tips and uh, we, we usually do, you know, monthly meetings and I'm excited about uh, helping them to uh, get off the ground and uh, we're doing nicely. So it's, uh, it's, it's exciting too. Nice. No, that's great. That's great. It's an angel investor. But I think you touched on a very, very important uh, uh, topic there is, is that, you know, you, you graduated from Kellogg MBA in 2002, you know, in the past and for the past 11, 12 years, you've continued your learning process and i think that's, that's, that's amazing that you said that because you know it it school doesn't stop once you've graduated it continues right it just keeps going as you as you you know progress in your career so that's fantastic um we at the nba where we like to start off this podcast with like a motivational quote let's get some let's talk about give me a motivational quote that's going to get the listeners pumped and ready to continue on their you know, their application process. Um, well, Matthew, um, as I was uh, you know, telling you beforehand, I think 
the dec decision to make an MBA. You know, it's a very important decision in life. It's not a, just a, a business or a, you know, a wage growing decision. It's something that you have to believe that it, it's really expanding your world, right? Yes. So I always think about what's the most important thing that you, you want from your life is happiness, right? So I I I read a little bit about uh, how Half Valdo Emerson. I loved the, their his quotes, and uh, there are these two quotes that I really like. Uh, one of them is like, um, yeah, um, "Happiness is a perfume that you, if you want to pour into people, you have to have some into you first. And the second one is that uh, happiness is something that uh, some people pursue it. Uh, meanwhile, other people created, and I think that really the decision to make and uh, to do an MBA outside, you, for us, is outside, right? <laughs> yeah. For us Brazilians and all the foreign students, it's really a decision about what you want from your life. Uh, how do you create your happiness? So it's it's really nice to think on those terms, I and mean, you 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 get more serene when you think about those terms, and you you don't get too much into you know, the competitive stuff or everything I want to do, you do that, you know, in a light way. You enjoy it, right? Right. Okay, so so just uh, I'm going to repeat this quote for our listeners. So this is, these are two quotes from Ralph Waldo Emerson. Uh, one is, uh, happiness is a perfume you cannot pour into others if you don't have some of your own. And happiness is something that some people pursue while others create. Uh Andrea, please tell us, you know, how have you created happiness in your life? I mean, how, how does this motivational quote apply in your life specifically? I mean, um, you know, all decisions I have um, made, you know, from, um, I mean, times that I don't even remember right now, uh, I, I have been, you know, kind of, think, kind of thinking that way. I mean, uh, you always have to think what you want first, and then you create the context to be happy uh, working with that stuff. So you, in many, many uh, opportunities, you have to change the course of your life uh, from think this, things that you thought were immutable, right? I mm -hmm. mean, were uh, unchangeable, if I should say that. And uh, if you think that you're actually changing the things to your purpose or the purpose of the values that you, the values that you believe in, and then you're creating your happiness. So I, I change it. I mean, I work it for 17 years in the same company. It's a very different path than the, you know, current, um, you know, work career uh, style, right? And uh, I changed that because um, uh, things uh, turn up in a way that I, I felt I was not happy at, at that. Uh, uh, I was doing well. I mean, I was making the money I wanted and but I I was not hell I, I was not happy with the results I was getting from that work so I changed it and I took risks and uh it's it's is that that's the way I think you should create your own happiness nice nice very nice yeah it, it, it is very difficult to accept change but you know you're right there's so many people today uh in the market who are successful who are you know who have steady job who are making you know good money but they're just not happy they're just you know there's something inside them that's that's bugging them I, I believe that's in the same situation as yours and in order to seek this happiness to create your own happiness uh you know you you have to make a change right you have to step out and be bold and be courageous so that's that's right that's very nice very nice and mba is a great chance to do that right Yes, that that is it is the MBA is a great chance and and I keep telling I tell everyone uh all of the candidates that I meet that that the MBA is going to really change your life in many different aspects not just, you know, professionally but also, you know, uh with, as far as friendship, as far as personal satisfaction and gratification. So, this is amazing. Now, let's talk about the time uh before your MBA program. You know, many of our listeners are candidates who are starting their application process today, and some are in the process already, uh, maybe awaiting for for uh, for an answer from a school. But uh, here, in this process, everybody everybody hits walls, hits challenges. They are challenged 
and emotionally and psychologically. What was the hardest part of the application process for you, and how did you deal with it? I mean, um, I think that the the hardest part for me is not very common today. I was uh, I had just you know five or six months to prepare myself because things end up to being that way in my in my opportunity. So I I didn't have too much time to prepare. So I have to you know be very organized and a, a lot of pressure. And uh, of course I I hit a lot of walls in that period. And I think the best things for you to have in mind is that there are two main points, I think. One of them is like seeing yourself as an MBA student. It comes before you get in in the school. There are so many good schools. You have a spot there for you. But you have to see yourself as an MBA student beforehand. You 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 have to believe that you 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 are you know in the right way to get there. Uh, you chose that, you are studying for that, there is a spot for you. That's the first thing you have to keep in mind, I think. The second thing is, you know, the process of dealing with failures. Like, you will have a lot of failures during the, 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 the preparation program, if I should say that. And um, you'll, you know, you'll crash in some of uh, the GMAT uh, simulations, uh, you you'll read some of your essays and think they're you know not good, and and uh, and that's that's the way it is. I mean, you have to learn through the way and and believe that each failure, each wall that you hit, it's a preparation step for you know you getting there. So if you have that in mind, you'll probably end up you know uh, having your spot guaranteed. Nice. So when you when you did get hit with a wall, what went through your mind? Like, what were what were some of the things that you were like, you know, what? Because everyone goes through a certain uh, mental breakdown process, in a sense. You know, at first they get angry or they get discouraged, and you know, and then from there they gradually move on to remotivating themselves. How did you go through that? Like, you know, through each challenge. You know, if you look to the other candidates that you know, or even per people that have already done the MBA. And uh, you're in a in, in a, that down downturn moment. You're you're a little, you know, uh, worried about uh, some hits in the wall. You have to compare yourself with that person and say, look, there's nothing special about anybody that I can't have in my in myself. So you step back from the failure, from you know the worry point, and you. You know, you just think about the whole pro the process and, and, and you will end up getting what you want. So you have to, you know, begin to uh, step back a little bit, be serene and go through the process again. Believe in yourself. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. It's definitely important to have uh, some self-confidence in that aspect. I think uh, what Andre was saying here is, you know, stepping back, you know, taking a breath and really kind of calming yourself down and then analyzing the situation while you have a filter of how confident are you as when compared against other candidates and you know if if they're in the run and you're in the run you're just as good or maybe even better than them keep going don't give up don't make it easy for somebody else right so in a sense it's kind of like you know you have to end up pushing yourself more than anything else Nice. That's very nice. Uh, now, was there a moment that you almost gave up? And if so, you know, how did you get through it? Or if, if not, I mean... Well, when I realized how much I had uh, to have done in five or six months beforehand, I went, when I got the sense of really what I should do to accomplish what I wanted at that time, I was <laughs> almost giving up in <laughs> yeah, the beginning, right? Beginning. right? Right in the beginning, but uh, as you enter the process, as yes, you start to focus your your attention on the issues at your hand, the things that you can do day by day, you start to immerse yourself in the in the in the decision. I mean, in the in the objective to go into it, uh, the school that you want or any school, because that's an interesting point. I mean, uh, I had the chance to get in the school I wanted from the start, but I know a lot of people that got in other schools and had a great experience. So there is a spot for you. 
you not necessarily uh, have just one or two options that you can live with. There's a lot of options for you to expand your world and have nice experiences. Nice, nice. Uh, when you were... I, I kind of want to go back here. When you say that you only had five or six months, I mean, you're talking about five or six months to go through all the proficiency tests, the essays, the recommendation letters, the interview process. That was it. Yes. You, you had to start. So you had five months to do the entire process. That's right. Wow. Choose the schools, get to know them, knowing what a school I wanted as a first option, everything, like five or six months. Yeah. Wow. That was just the way it went for me. I was not prepared beforehand. I mm -hmm. was not planning that uh, with, you know, a huge uh, time ahead. Wow. So that's so, it. So the, so the challenges were even greater in your sense because you had, you had the time limitation there. But yeah, it, also, uh, it also proves that it's possible to do, uh, you know, in this time or in a, in a bigger time, you have opportunities to do it better, right? Yeah, so. that's true. That's true. You, you don't have to be afraid. It's 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 okay. Now I'm not genius. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a genius. I mean, uh, uh, everybody can do that. It's a it's a it's, it depends on your sense of prioritization. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to get in mind uh, the things that you want from the process first, and then focus on them instead of you know just end up pursuing what one people think is right, other people think it's right, and you get lost. You have to take care of that. Right, so it, it, it's it's I don't know. I I I feel that is it's, it's a very interesting five. It would have been a very interesting five months in a sense because a lot of candidates today, you know, they they have full time jobs and you know sometimes they don't have enough time to to really really commit to it. But I think you're right, and it's it's about prioritizing and really just taking the first steps. And once you kind of take the first steps, you get the ball rolling and everything starts falling into place and you know, don't worry, you'll get there. But you, you won't get there if you keep thinking about it. You, you'll get there once you start taking action. Exactly. That's the main point. Awesome. Great. Now, how did you know that your school of choice was the right fit for you? I mean, you, you mentioned that you, you were accepted into your top choice, which is Kellogg, right? Right. How did you know that was Kellogg? What, what, what were some of the things that, that made Kellogg your personal favorite choice? You know, I, I always had an interest in knowing myself a little more than usual, uh, than the usual, you know, business person do. So I always, you know, went uh, kind of through a process of knowing myself. So when I started to, what I did was, like, okay, I know a little bit what I want for myself. So let me get to know the schools. So Hanks and Ranks, uh, sorry, Ranks and... Um, uh, you know the magazines, the, the 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 stuff that you get in media is very useful to start with. So you can you know get to know a little bit about the schools, right? And then when you narrow down to some options based on what you read, that is very important that you get to know the people that came from that school or that mm -hmm. know that school that work somehow with that school, because only then you really go through the real cultural issues of the school. I mean, what's really different about them? And actually, I don't believe that you have just one right fit for you. I mean, you can adapt yourself to different situations, right? So, and be happy with it. I mean, be successful with it. And in my case, I saw Kellogg as a, you know, from the beginning, from the first readings and uh, getting to know some people that went there that was the right in my time and before my time actually most people wanted schools that had the brands you know you have to have the brand of you know harvard brand in you Kellogg was not very known at that time he was in the first place in the ranking for two three or four years already but it was not known mainly here in brazil so I, what i did was i i I detached from that, uh, I tried to detach from that uh, objective of having just a brand stamping on you and try to see exactly what go goes on into the school MBA process. And if I want to fit or not in that cultural environment. And I, it, hap it so happened that uh, Kellogg was the right fit for you, for me. Sorry. Okay, so like, well, what is it about the Kellogg culture that really attracted you, that really, that you... That you really felt a connection with? 
Well, you know, in my work and life experience, I I, I think I learned that uh, you get results through, you know, interaction with people. You know, you the real results, the things that you get done day by day, you know, the, the challenge that you overcome, you do it with other people cooperating. So uh, I think that's the way it happens in most of the, you know, project works. And when I saw that Kellogg was focusing on that uh, from the beginning of uh, the school's existence and actually bringing that as a new issue for other schools to adapt to, uh, and then I, I I got into that and researched a little bit to see if that was true or just, you know, a marketing uh, advertisement uh, strategy. But it was not. It was really, you know, the way the school uh, operated. It was through the people, you know, the interaction uh, among the people that was a student there. And so I, I saw myself uh, doing, you know, most for that school than I would do for a school in which I was, you know, mostly prompted to you know, just work by myself and study for my own and try, you know, to uh, other other objectives than that. Okay, so you're very collaborative and you, you kind of look for that team environment. That That's what I wanted and Kellogg was there, you know, just perfectly fitting what I wanted. Wow, nice, nice. Now... You, could you give, a, give our listeners some tips and advice on like what they should expect like the, the minute they arrive uh, for their MBA programs? I mean, uh, I mean, consulting offices, we, we prepare students uh, up until they're accepted. And then afterwards, we kind of follow along. But, you know, the experience of the student, once they step foot on campus, you know, that's a whole new adventure in itself, right? What kind of tips and advice can you give our students? I, I I would say you should expect to be lost. Yeah, you'll be flogged with, you know, so many things you think you should do. And, you know, so many clubs. The moment I stepped in Kellogg, I saw, you know, the day of, you know, registration. I saw that you know, 20 or 30 booths of people trying to sell, you know, my club, you do that, you have to do that. And so it's too much. And I think everybody goes through that process. And I think that what is important is you knowing what is important for you, right? You have to put yourself and your interests in the center and starting to prioritize uh, uh, from that point. And then you choose right uh, what's what's good for you to, to, to do in the first, you know. Actually, I did my first uh, quarter in a very light way. I didn't get involved with recruiting. Right? I was sponsored, but I had, but I wanted to do my my summer job outside my company so i i had that challenge but i i chose to you know step back and and not even get involved in recruiting the first quarter so i just get got the sense of the school try to organize what the things i wanted to focus on on the rest of the, the course so i think the main the main tip that i have to to give you is uh you know try to find what you want now beforehand and then you'll get you know a narrow list of things that really matter for that and uh, an operational a more operational tip would be you know get in advance uh, don't let don't 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 leave for the last minute to get into the, the campus i mean i was uh, one month ahead uh, living in the in, in evanston so i you know i kind of got a sense of the school before that registration day Oh, that's important. That's very important because some students, you know, arrive maybe a week or two before. Yeah. And it just is even crazier then. So you arrived one month before. Would yes. you say one month was good or like a little bit more time would have been better? What do you think? No, one month is nice. It was not working nice for me. It, I mean, it was nice like that. I got to do anything, uh, everything that I wanted. So what, what kind of things did you do? Like, did you visit, you know, restaurants? Um, no, first know. of all, I got, uh, you know, set up my, you know, housing, uh -huh. room, okay. of course. And then I, you know, used the, the tools that I had uh, at that time in the school to find out what other people were already in the city, in the campus. So I started to meet those people and, you know, kind of build some relationships beforehand. And also, I got to know the, the restaurants, the city, what was interesting to do besides, you know, studying. And it was nice. Nice. Okay, well, 
so so when you said housing, that's interesting because you know a lot of students they're confused about what what's this housing situation like living on campus and off campus because it's not something very common in Brazil, right? I mean, right um, to live on campus very. Uh, so this is a is a foreign concept. How did you deal with the ha housing situation? I mean, what what did you opt for when you got there? Like, did you get an apartment away from campus or on campus? How did you go through that process? You know, I got lucky with this uh, in choosing Kellogg because uh, as everybody's very much cooperative, I mean, I got uh, in contact with second years uh, or even people that have already finished their MBA, Brazilians mainly, and they, you know, they they gave me a set of tips where they made it very easier for me to go through the decisions about housing. So I knew what was the, in terms of Evanston, Illinois, Kellogg, uh, what were, what were the the advantages of uh, doing uh, in, uh, on campus housing or off campus housing uh, what are the things that you, you if you live in Evanston area but you're not on campus you cannot drive into the university so you have to walk right and uh, chicago in evanston is like minus 30 uh, celsius right so it's a uh, it's a really bad weather so you have to get all of that the those tips uh, beforehand so you can decide rightly for you nice so do you hear that listeners get in touch with the school alumni and second year students because they can give you just just amazing tips on how to set yourself up once you get you know once you get to your nba as well and yes that's true i mean that is something to consider minus 30 degrees celsius is very cold weather and if you're not driving and you have to walk that distance you know, you may want to find other ways, to, other places to live, maybe closer to the campus. So these are things to consider. And this is great. This is fantastic information. Um, now, when, let's go deep into like the actual MBA experience. Uh, could you draw, draw us a picture of a typical day in the life of an MBA student? I mean, like, what is it? Because, you know, when you were an applicant, you you had an idea of what was going to happen, but you really didn't, right? You like you said, you know, the first thing is to expect is to be is to feel lost. How was it that transition? You know, when you, once you're lost and you start getting familiar with the day to day, what is the what is it like for a student? You know, you wake up in the morning, kind of walk us through. Uh, I would say that yeah, yeah, for. A a greater a great part of your MBA you will still get lost a lot of times, <laughs> and uh, a typical MBA uh, day it's it's a frantic day. Uh, you you have to deal with so many different stuff, and each day you have one more right. You, so you have different classes. Kellogg was a school that pushed you towards you know making contact with people. So you had always different groups to work with. Uh, in class uh, activities and also in extra class activities. You are pushed to lead clubs and uh, Kellogg doesn't have a lot of staff and that's a strategy. So the students actually lead the creation of, you know, meetings, events and everything. So you, and you, 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 you put yourself in a leading position. You have to now live up to it. So you, you, you start to add so many things to your day that it's really get, gets frantic. And uh, what you, again, what you, I think you should do is, you know, focus on things that you're really interested in. Don't go with all the others. Don't try to do what every, everybody else is doing. Just focus on uh, what's important for you. If, if leadership is an important, uh, you know, development opportunity for you, and then you should try to choose some of those uh, activities that push you on the, that direction. And invest your time and and and, and the, all the the, the social con contacts, you know, the, the parties and everything is just crazy. I mean, it just happens to you. You wake and you go to sleep and you you don't know. I mean, it's, it's so many things you have to do. So it's it's really crazy. It's very important for you to organize yourself and know exactly what you want from you know each period of the MBA. Wow. Okay. So. How much of the day would you say was spent like in class and studying in groups and stuff? Like, um, you know, a fourteen a fourteen hour day. 
Wow. <laughs> a 14 hour day, I would say like uh, 60% of time, you know, yeah. you would be in class or in a group project or talking to people about stuff going on in, actually in a class, right? Mm -hmm. And the other period, I mean, the other 40%, you could either, you know, enjoy an opportunity to lead some extra class activity or you also it depends on your condition i had a lot of friends that had to you know give time to children and and uh, and the family that they brought with them to uh, to live with them uh, through the mba program so you have actually to you know, make a, what's important for you and 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 give that time enough okay. all right so then there, you have clubs and social events and parties uh tell us a little bit about this uh you know extracurricular stuff it's very important i think it's uh, one of the most important things for your life experience is the extracurricular i mean yeah i don't believe it's my personal belief that you're getting less from a school that puts you in a situation that you have to spend like a hundred percent of your time doing just class stuff because you have to lead, actually, in the real world, you have to deal with people outside your work uh, or even in between, right? You're working, but you also, you know, in a social, uh, socially uh, friendly environment, uh, in, a, in a gathering or something. So uh, Kellogg put me through a very, uh, you know, tough uh, schedule uh, on those terms. I mean, you, you have to, you, you, you are... You are actually um, uh, motivated to get involved in so many things and then afterwards you have to deal and, and make it happen right and, uh, and that's a nice experience it's uh, it's very important to get involved in all the extracurricular activities nice nice so, so it's, understand exactly what you want to get take out of the experience and also be flexible enough so that you can enjoy all the extracurricular stuff going on because all of that will add value to your MBA experience. It's not just the academic part um, uh, of the, of the uh, MBA. Uh, thank you for that amazing information. Now, what, what kind of things do you think, like, I mean, how did you manage your time between like the campus activities? I mean, you know, we're talking about having to organize yourself, but how did you specifically uh, organize your time because a lot of students get this idea that an MBA is going to be like a sabbatical or, you know, I'm going to take two years off work and I'm going to enjoy it. And when they get to an MBA, they get hit with this huge, this, this huge problem of organizing their time. And there's so many things, you know, students want to do everything, but that's just not physically possible. How did you specifically get to organizing your time, kind of really making sure that you didn't get overwhelmed with, with the amazing content that Kellogg offered. Well, let, let me tell you guys that um, uh, this uh, that there's something about this feeling of sabbatical. That is true because uh, you'll have fun. You'll have fun through the two years. But it's, there are a lot of stuff there as far away as possible from the sabbatical period because uh, you, it's hectic. You, you, you will have to deal with more things that you uh, can possibly tackle in, in a normal day <laughs> okay. so even if you expand your day you will not be able to you now deal with everything so actually again choosing what you want is the main you know i think the main tool but you also have other tools you have to you organize your schedule it's basic stuff like uh, try to think of a little bit ahead of what's going on on the next uh, you know days or weeks and after, and, and also uh stop sometimes to review what you got from the, the previous period. I mean, you, you, were, you were there for a month. Stop and to think about what did you get on that month? What, what did you do right and wrong? And how did you deal with those you know, hectic times? And then you naturally learn a little bit more in, on what to do right in the next period. Oh, okay. So do, do like, uh, you mean, you know, stop at certain points and review kind of, what you've taken out of it, how well you've managed your time, and then keep adjusting as you go along. That's, that's very interesting. That's very good. That's very valuable uh, uh, advice there. Now, th I think that's another thing too, as far as classes. I mean, sometimes I hear students who say, ah, 
I, I registered for two classes, one right after the other, but they're both on opposite ends of the campus, you know? Is there any way that you can check that before? I don't know. Has that happened to you? Um, actually, no, because uh, Kellogg has just one building, right? And it's building a one new building. Right? It's, it's an awesome one right now. And so he, he, they also are thinking for you, right? They, ah, it's nice. difficult for you to get into that situation because everything, you know, try to guide you towards a, a nicer schedule, right? So mm -hmm. it's difficult. But uh, if you get in that situation, if you, for example, if you choose to do a course outside your school, many schools like Kellogg, it's our part of a university. So you can get a course in other schools from that university. And then you can get into that situation you just described. Um, so, of course, if you are off the limits of the helping of your school uh, in organizing, try to think ahead and think about those stuff, all right? Uh, where do I have to be at some time and other time? That's that's usual. But you you usually get help from people that have already, uh, you know, gone through uh, challenges like that. Oh, so, nice. Also considering that it's going to be negative 30 degrees Celsius, so you don't want to be running it's across nice, the campus. right? You can run, <laughs> You can right? run, yeah. Keep you warm, right? Go through. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's great. Um, now, let's take this down. Uh, let's bring this interview to the present. Now, how, how valuable has this MBA experience been for your, you know, both your professional and your personal life? Like, what were some of the ta main takeaways that, that really brought value to your life, I think, from an MBA program? Well, I would say that uh, the MBA is actually invaluable. <laughs> it's a nice, uh, it's, a, it's an asset that you can't, it's difficult to put a, a price tag, tag on it. It's, a, it's a, actually, as I said before, it's a life expanding experience. So you, you actually have a lot more than you pay for, I think. But the things that uh, helped me today, I mean, I was an engineer working in the financial markets. Everything that I uh, learned that up to that point in the MBA were, uh, you know, job relation learning, like it was the on the job learning. And uh, I, in my case, I felt the need to expand my knowledge and, and, uh, and Kellogg helped me a lot on that. I mean, to, even today, I use some of the concepts and, 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 and fundamentals that I learned uh, through the MBA. And that's, that's other thing that I want to emphasize. I mean, I think that fundamentals are more important than in, uh, you know in-depth details unless you were really thinking about just you know going to a work that's related uh, with those details right after the school it tr I, I would try to focus more on the fundamentals because that's you know going to uh, be valuable for all your life uh, i i usually get uh, you know hit with some concepts that i learned there and I'm uh, using today, 10 years from now, from that time, right? And uh, so in terms of knowledge, I would say that concepts and fundamentals are the best way to, you know, add value to your whole career. But also networking is very important. You get to know a lot of amazing people there. People that will be important, people that will be motivated to do different things, but have an impact in the world. And uh, you'll have the 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 the, uh, the chance to contact those people uh, anytime from that point on. So focus on getting to know a little bit about those people as much as you as you can. I mean, don't spend your time just you know just studying by yourself, uh, closed in a room. Talk to people because that that uh, connection will be important in the future. Uh, and lastly, I would say that for me, you know, the teamwork and the leading experience that I had the chance to bring to life during my MBA was actually by itself unvaluable because every time I, you know, I have uh, challenges dealing with people and teams that I had at that time in a small, you know, environment. So it's, it's kind of uh, good for you to have that, that experience beforehand. Nice, nice. So they, it, it's kind of funny. I mean, I, I, sometimes I get students who are kind of shy. You know, they're 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 very kind of you know, they're just very shy. They're not really sure how how would they how would they engage with other students in that situation. I mean, 
do they what would you say like do they have to make that effort into going out and, and reaching out to to these different students or is the kellogg environment really just people just talk to you wherever you are i mean all i have to do is just kind of open up and how is that how is that interaction because some students are kind of like ah you know they're they're, they're embarrassed they're like, i'm not gonna go talk to them. i'm not sure what would you say to them like you know, it's a it's a it's a once in a lifetime experience, right? So you you have to take some risks uh, if you are in a school in, that doesn't give you all, you know, the tools uh, by by itself by the school itself for you. You have to you know make it happen. But um, I was lucky because Kellogg had all the setup. You know, everything was thought of in terms of getting you to know as much as many people as possible so you have all these uh, different groups you could not in the first quarters choose people that you want to work with you you were obligated to work with random uh, people in different settings so you have always six or seven groups with different things going on and then that helps you to uh, build a relationship or build a connection with other people wow one thing that i would say to foreign students that don't stick only to your, you know, country uh, group, try to, you know, understand most of the, it's a, it's a natural, def, a natural defense that comes to you to stay, you know, in, in that group, uh, even to talk a little bit, you know, a little critically about the, you know, the other, the other countries or your host country, don't do that and you know, try to be open and, and understand a different diver diversity that you will encounter. Oh, those that, opportunities. that's actually that's actually very very true and i tell that to a lot of my brazilian students you know it's very natural for you to go to a foreign location and i have students who say i'm going to do like for example a foreign exchange in the united states to learn english they come back and they don't really learn english and what i find out is they spent their time speaking portuguese with other brazilian you know english uh, foreign exchange students so that's very good that you said that. Don't stick to your little uh, country cluster. You know, really get out of your comfort zone. Engage students from other countries. Make friends from students from other countries because this will only help you in the long run. Um, you know, as far as, you know, professionally or personally, understanding other cultures. And I think that's just great, great actionable advice that you just gave. Just get out of your comfort zone. Don't don't just feel, you know, don't enclose yourself. This is a one-in-a-lifetime experience. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, now, I have a kind of a quirky question here. Now, if you had a time machine and you could go back to the time you were applying, what would you have said to yourself? Or it could, this could be even during your NBA. You know, if you can go back in time and there was something that you would have done differently, what would what would you do and why? I mean, what what, what would you change? Yeah, it's a, that's a very interesting question, and uh, you know, um, I think uh, for me it was uh, you know taking more risks. Now, it, I all I actually took a lot of risks uh, in terms of you know personal risks and uh, you know changes that I made. But I I think that I, if I went back in time, I, one thing that I would do I would take more of those risks, you know, get to know more people or, you know, put yourself out of your control zone, involve yourself with things that you feel that you're not, you know, uh, very good with and enjoy very much the things that you are good already. Now, try to go in, de in, 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 in deep explorations of what you're good with also and do that in a way that you take some you know risks to expand your 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 abilities i i would do that during the mba and us in and also during my you know uh, career i would change a little bit more than i than i did yeah yeah so you would you would be, be bolder maybe be Tell yourself to be courageous and just keep going, you know, take risks. Yes. And that w together with you know, what we said earlier about dealing with the failures in the right way, that is a powerful uh, mixture, right? If you take risks and you know how to deal when you fail, uh, when you know how to deal with the results when you fail. So you learn to do better next time. That's a really powerful 
make sure. Wow, that is that is that is a very very powerful uh, uh, skill set there to have. You know, to be able to learn from failure and to take risks. If you have the, that combination, that one two punch, you know, that's just going to take you to greater greater uh, experiences in the future. I think that's wow. I think you summed up the entire theme of this this interview. It, it, you know, step out of your comfort zone. Don't be don't be afraid to take risks, but also understand that. You need to learn how to deal with failures so you can keep taking more further risks. That's that's great. NASA. Wow. Part of my Portuguese came out there. We at the NBA Wire would just like to thank you for making your time available to us. And we appreciate your words of wisdom. Now, I can assure you that somewhere in the world, a candidate who is on the verge of giving up on his dream to pursue his NBA has just received a boost in his energy. I, I would like to ask you to take this final moment to give a shout out to your alumni brothers or your school or anybody you want to thank or, you know, mention here and also let our listeners know how they can reach you. If, you know, if, if they should have any questions. Oh, uh, well, um, I want you to no, know, thank you for the opportunity. I think it's a really uh, nice thing you're doing you now, given your time, to help people motivate themselves uh, into this difficult process of, you know, knowing themselves and trying to get a result into getting into uh, an MBA school. That's that's very nice of you. Thank and you. Um, and well, we shout a lot out for <laughs> for ourselves in Kellogg. So I mean, I, I it's a great school. I think if you're thinking about going MBA, you sh you surely should. Uh, and I spent some time knowing the school. It's it's awesome. I mean. It's incredible, incredible school. And uh, but I would like to, you know, I, I I'm free to to answer questions. I mean, you can reach me through my personal email, which is Andre Duarte Oliveira, all together at hotmail.com. That's my personal email, and you can shoot me an email, and I'll be help. I'll, I'll be glad to help you with anything else that I can. Okay, no, that's great. I'll I'll have uh, Andre's information on our show notes page, uh, but. Yeah, if you're, if you're interested in Kellogg, if you're interested in, in getting to know Kellogg better and you have, have questions that you want to ask, thank you for being available to, uh, to our listeners. Uh, but definitely take a look into Kellogg. I mean, I've heard so many great things about this school. Uh, I've met some of the most friendliest, friendliest people who are MBA, uh, uh, Kellogg MBA alumni. And, and, you know, it's just an environment that I feel personally, that, that really resonates with myself as well. I mean, just very collaborative and people are there to help you. And that's the world that we live in today. So I want to thank uh, Andre Duarte Oliveira one more time. And, and just, guys, thank you listeners for, for tuning in to another episode of the NBA Wire. This podcast was built for you to help motivate you, provide any information um, that we can. Uh, send us your feedback or your questions at the at our website it's www.thembawire.com uh send me your feedbacks and your questions i'll try to answer them as possible as best as possible and citizens of the wire i will catch you guys on our next episode thanks thanks for tuning into the mba wire would you like to know more? Visit us online at thembawire.com today and leave your questions and feedback. While you're there, sign up for an exclusive free audio series to help you strengthen your MBA interview. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time on the MBA Wire. MBA.